Let's look at an application of uh, area between curves. We introduced this idea of uh, Gini index or Gini coefficient during the last lecture, but let's look at an example from uh, baseball. So US Today, USA Today has data on baseball salaries. We're going to grab a table from them. Usually, if I'm not working in Colab and I'm working locally, this works. But um, I just had to actually load in. I just saved the page and loaded it in and used pandas to read HTML. And it will read in any HTML tables from an HTML file. Gives them to you as a list. So just grabbing the first one. Anyway, we get those players, salaries, what year, the total value, average annual. But we're just going to look at this salary column. Now, because it has these dollar signs and commas and things, the computer is not going to treat it as a number. So just a little bit of work to clean that up, get rid of those dollar signs and commas. And then if we look at, once it becomes a number and we look at the distribution, we have something that looks like this, which means that most of the players are down here on the low end of the salaries. There's very few who have these big yearly salary numbers like Max Scherzer with 42 million. All right, it seems that most of the players in baseball have very low salaries. So as we did in class, we're gonna look at just the percentile. So we're gonna, to do that, we'll sort those salaries. So you see the low end starts at 555,000 here. Save, we'll save that as this sorted salaries and then we'll break it into five pieces. So at, a, at about every 175 players, there's 877 um, players in our data. So if we were to chop that into five pieces, we'd do it every 175 or so. And that's all we're doing here is, is building those data points. And then we have, we want to know what percent of the salaries are in that first quartile. So that's the total salaries there over the total salaries. And then within the first 40%, the total salaries over the total salaries and so on and so on. And here's what we find. What this means is that about 2% of the overall wealth and salaries is controlled by the lower 20% of players. 5% by 40, 11% by 60, 30% by 80, and 100% by 100%. So if we actually plot that, like our plot from class, here's what the distribution of baseball salaries ends up looking like. And again, what we said was that this diagonal line was perfect equality because then 20% of the wealth is controlled by 20% of the population, 40% of the wealth by 40, and so on. But you can see that we have quite a bit of departure from that perfect equality. And we said that we could measure this we could understand this equality simply by looking at the amount of area under the curve. Now, what we want is we want kind of a norm. We want to understand that in terms of a normal um, number. So we look at the Gini index as the ratio of the area between those curves to the area in the triangle. So the area of um, that perfect equality minus this is the Lorentz curve here, so we'll call that L. This is E. All right, we take that and we divide it by the area of this triangle, which is always going to be one half, right? It's one by one. The area of a triangle is one half times one times one in this case, so we would have divided by one half, aka two times the area between perfect equality in Lorentz. And this gives us our Gini. So before we can do that, we need a function for the model of the salary 
values. This one is easy. That's y equals x. This is y equals x. But I'm not sure. We're not sure what this function is. So we're going to have to approximate it. Now we'll we'll just use the computer for now to do that. And it turns out that actually a quadratic, like we used in our example in class, didn't fit the data very well. However, if I used a, a, quarter, a fourth degree polynomial, it actually fit the um, data pretty well. Okay, but that means that we have more coefficients because a fourth degree polynomial is going to be something of the form we'll have y equals ax to the fourth plus bx to the third plus cx squared plus dx plus e. So we've got one, two, three, four, five coefficients now. And that's what these guys are. There's our five coefficients. All right, so now we have a polynomial that we can use to model um, this data with. And NumPy actually has a handy, you know, this was pretty quick and easy to find that. We just gave it the uh, domain and the y values, what degree we want, and we got the coefficients back. Then if we want to build a polynomial based on those, we can use this NP polyval. So this plugs in uh, these values for x and creates a polynomial evaluated at all of them. So if we plot those, you see that the approximate and true curves kind of line, they're right on top of one another. All right, and so to replicate that, I'm just gonna, you know, those decimals, I probably don't need them all. And if we check the just kind of rounded version of everything, this is what our polynomial that we found will look like. So then we can define a function, call it capital L of X for Lorenz, and we'll define our other function. Remember, that's just uh, gonna spit back Y equals X. And now we have a function that lines right up with our data. That's what we see here. So the last thing is to actually compute the Gini index. And again, that's two times the integral of x. That's that uh, curve. We didn't draw it in this one, but just this y equals x minus f of x. All right, and multiply that by 2. So this is what we have here, right? And we're interested in area one. So we can do like we've done before. We'll define a function to be the difference of those. So we can just evaluate one thing for the area under the curve. Here's our area. It's the perfect equality minus Lorenz. Call that A1. And let's find that area from zero to one. Now, again, based on our definition, we have... Uh, two times that definite integral will give you Gini. So the Gini index for our professional baseball salaries is 0.6. What that means is it's pretty unequal distribution of wealth. Again, a, uh, the lower this value, the more equal distri the closer to equal distribution, right? The tighter this area is or the less kind of sag there is under that curve. So it looks like the distribution of wealth in baseball, not that great right now. But you can really do this with any kind of, um, any kind of data. All right, so another example is New York City actually makes available public employee uh, payroll data. So what we've done here is, I think I actually have to do this installation so that we can get the data using the API here. This is just some code from the 
website. They give you this code for how to pull the data. And here's what we end up with. Um, I just pull, I pulled 10,000 records and we can, there's 8,634 salaries or data points on salaries in 2020. And if you take a look, here is what the distribution of that payroll looks like. So for extra credit this week, if you'd like, you can um, do an analysis of the distribution of wealth amongst city employees in New York City.